This week, I'm expanding my village with this awesome looking alchemy shop. I'm using my smoke machine, some Hearst Arts molds, and an LED to really make this thing stand out. You want to see how I did it? Stay tuned, because it's coming up right now on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I want to jump back into buildings. Now, I know back in October, I did the Haunted Mansion, but I want to do some smaller builds for my village. I knew the next building was going to be this alchemy shop, but there were a couple of things holding me back from starting it. One was the smoke coming out of this stack. I was going to spray paint some cotton pink or purple, like I did in my miniature ghost video, and the pipes, I could have used straws or paper towel rolls, but that's not the look I was going for. Once I got my hands on the Hearst Arts molds for the pipes and the smoke machine from Wayne's Workshop, I knew I had all the tools I needed to craft this exactly how I had envisioned it. Now, if you want to win a free set of plans for this craft, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram and leave a comment down below as to what building you want to see next added to this list for my village. I'll announce the winner next week on Instagram. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so this build, like a lot of my other ones, has a set of plans that you can download if you want to follow along and help support the channel. You can find a link in the description below to pick those up, but it's not necessary. Now, this base part of the build is going to be made out of dollar store foam core, and you'll see that I left the paper on. It's going to become a little bit of an issue down the road just for the peaks. So if you're doing this, pull the paper off of the peak on the right and left side, as well as where my thumb is uh, right there. And you can see on the edges of just these sections of the foam core, I took an X-Acto knife and I tapered them. That way they fit together real nice and come to a point at the top. Now taking a two inch and a one inch piece of XPS foam, we're going to use that to cut out this uh, little brewing area for the potions. And I cut these out on my Proxon with a circle jig and I just glued them together with a little bit of hot glue. If you have the heat set just right on the Proxon, it'll cut through the hot glue with absolutely no problem. And you don't need a lot of hot glue either. Okay, so these plans will change throughout the video. It's because I find little things I need to adjust as I'm going through. So your final set of plans will actually have, um, you know, this uh, cauldron or the, uh, the brewing area um, drawn on them so you can find exactly where those spots are to mark with the pen so that you can cut out that section of the house and it will allow for this to slide right into place. Now, very important, you need to make sure to save your kid's solar system project from last year's science fair. And most importantly, make sure to save Saturn and Earth because those are the two planets you're going to need to uh, put on top to make the top of the, uh, the brewing area. And you can get these little styrofoam balls at you know any big box store, any craft store. And they really kind of... Um, you can manipulate them really easy. You can crush them down. And that's going to be kind of important later on in the build for when we want to add our components for the smoke machine. And get this as close as you can. And don't worry about it being exact or cutting too much out because we're going to cover a lot of this in Milliput in just a few minutes. All right, that intersection is important to cut out for the smoke machine. If you don't have a smoke machine or you don't plan on adding it to the build, you can leave these few little steps out. This is going to be like a little window for us to run all of our tubing through. Okay, now I'm taking a little bit of XPS foam and we're going to make our base out of it. Uh, I've got a few separate little pieces that I'm going to attach throughout the video. If you want, you can make this one solid piece. Now this section has to be cut out um, to allow for, obviously, the rest of the build to fit together properly. 
but if you line this up you could actually make this whole section you know one solid base again if you're not going to use a smoke machine and you want to have a playable interior um, that's obviously what you're going to want to do and i'm not worried about not having a playable interior for this because it's a one-story building so all i need to do is make a five inch by six inch you know rectangular piece uh, make the floor stone or wood or whatever i want and when somebody enters the building, I'm just going to take this off the table and replace it with that. Now I wanted to show this, you know, a lot of times you'll have excess hot glue that sticks out. And when you can, don't worry about it at the time. Sometimes it gets a little stressful when you got a lot of things going together and gluing them. Just leave it and you can use the edge of your hot glue gun to smear it out nice and flush and it's just going to help to hold the build together. Alright, now we're going to cut a whole bunch of bricks for the build. And, you know, I was really on the fence with this. <laughs> we're going to enter some dark times, so I had to adjust the lighting here. Where we're going to add a whole bunch of bricks to the build. Uh, typically, I like to use, a, you know, like an XPS foam roller. I've shown you how to do that on the channel, how to make them. But in this one, I wanted a lot of really good detail in the rocks. So we're going to add them to this little tumbler I made with some stones in it just to texture them up all real quick. <laughs> and right there, it's probably 1130 at night when I was filming this and I heard my wife wake up upstairs. So yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, the corners of the build, we're going to uh, just address them like that. And for the main portion, we're going to make some irregular shaped rocks. Now you might have seen this on the channel before. It's just a real simple way of making sure you know where the magnets are going to go on the top and bottom of the build. That's a cool little trick for placing the magnet in as well. Once the magnet's in place, just add a little hot glue. Again, using the side of the glue gun, you can smear it so it's nice and flush, and that magnet will never come out. Okay, now we're on to some wood grain. We're going to add some of that to a bunch of you know, XPS foam, and just have fun with this, go around the whole build, adding timber to the whole thing. All right, now we're going to go into some Hearst Arts molds that I had a video on a few weeks back, and I'm using some of his pipe sections, and I'm going to just glue all these together with some tacky glue. Now this is Milliput. You haven't seen this yet on the channel. I really wanted to, you know, show it off. So that's what we're gonna do here. And we're gonna use that to coat our planets <laughs> there in the background. Um, and we're, we're gonna be able to add some really nice detail to this when we're done. And as you can see, you wanna make sure that you clean off whatever cutting device you're using because it can actually harden it up a little bit on the end there, which isn't a big deal. You can just cut it off and throw it out, but Anyway, so I rolled that out um, nice and flat on some parchment paper. And you can see it's a little messy. This is the, I think, the super fine that I used. So, you know, prepare to make a little bit of a mess on your fingers and stuff, but it was really worth it. I was really happy with the way this looked when I was done. You can see I'm trying to contain the mess there by using a paper towel. And just using a little bit of water, you can smear this out real nice, exactly how you like it. And I left it a little rough because I thought it looked a little bit like hammered metal. So I thought that was kind of neat as well. Now to add the line work for the uh, metal plates, I just used the X-Acto knife and a clay sculpting tool, obviously, for the rivets. And this was a section of Milliput I had left over. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want to waste it. And I thought this was a cool little addition. Now I'm cutting this section out because I want to add a chimney to the other side. It was a little bare, didn't have anything going on on this side. So I figured we'll add a nice chimney to it. And again, instead of making this out of one solid piece of XPS foam, the whole build is going to be individual bricks or rocks. So this obviously had to be the same. Now you want to make sure that the first layer is glued to the base. Now this second layer is important that it's only glued to the dollar store foam core because obviously we need this to be removed. That way we can either A, 
play inside of it if you're not adding the smoke machine, or if you are, we can open it up to hide the smoke machine. All right, now I beg you, please do not roast me too bad <laughs> for this piece right here. It's some diamond plate. You know, we're playing in a fantasy world where there's dragons and sky ships and magical swords. In my world, there's diamond plate, and this guy invented it. So I'm gonna add that cool little fan to the top of that eave. Now we're gonna add a little bit of stonework, some flagstone around this base. That's going to um, be the stand, I guess, for our other little vat. Now we can cut this section out from the plan. Actually, it's really helpful. It took me quite a few cuts with the paper to get that just right. But it's going to allow us to add some nice woodwork to the roof. And there's some more her starts that I'm casting for the build. Now you can see we're adding some really cool woodwork just to the ends on both sides. That way, any of the Hearst Arts shingles that we're going to add to this that might show, XPS foam shows under it, it's actually going to look like the wood that would typically be there. Alright, so I used tacky glue for the big sections because, you know, it's going to take a minute to get them just right. The small section I want to keep cranking, so um, I just added a little bit of hot glue to that. Again, adding details. It's all about adding layers, stepping back, looking at your build and thinking about, you know, does this section look like it could have a little something extra, you know, added to it to make it more interesting to look at. Typically the answer for the most part is always yes. You can find something to add um, as long as it kind of fits with obviously the build that you're working on. And you'll notice later on here in the build that um, we're gonna work on paint layers as well. Everything's in layers. And now we're gonna bedazzle this thing. We're gonna use some of these bigger rhinestones around the larger band. And here's what I'm talking about in layers, right? This is sort of another layer. We've got a smaller strip. Instead of just leaving that as is, I wanna take some smaller little rhinestones and put them there. Now for the stonework around the entire build, I took three sheets of XPS foam and I'm going to vary them up as I'm cutting them out. That way all my stone isn't the same thickness. That way we're going to add a lot of depth and dimension to all the stonework around the building. And this part will take a little bit of time, but you know, I really, really think it was worth it in the end. It came out really nice. Okay, so we can use a plan to cut this door shape out. And we're gonna have a stone around the outside, obviously with a wood door. And I've got a video on how to make doors too. You can make a bunch of these ahead of time. I almost used one of my dungeon doors and I didn't actually make one for this video, but I decided, you know, what the heck, I'll just make one and, and show it off. And you can see that the door, again, it's working in layers and depth. It's sticking out from the rock a little bit. Again, it's going to make it look that much cooler to look at instead of having it flush with the build. Now here you can see this is where I ran into an issue, not being able to texture that woodwork. I had to cut a really thin sheet of XPS foam, make it look like the wood, and slide it right into place. It actually worked out pretty nice. Now here I'm poking a hole right through the build. If you have the smoke machine, you're adding the smoker, you're gonna need to do this step. If not, obviously you can just glue it right in place. Now this big smoke stack that we're adding to the top of this is just made out of some paper towel rolls and you know, decorate it up again in layers with some XPS foam. All right, now we're getting there. We have this thing Mod Podge. It's just some Mod Podge and black paint and we're gonna add a really cool beam to the top of the uh, that ridge there on the main part and the uh, smaller section as well. Now the Hearst Arts molds cut really easy. Um, this is Hydro Stone. I actually used a little bit of Ortho Stone too in this as well. And you just use a pair of tile nippers and uh, it trims them up real nice. I used the Dremel for a few cuts, but for the most part, scoring them even works well too with an Ulfa knife and then you can kind of snap them. 
All right, now that's the tube for the smoke machine. I wanted that in there just to line this up so I had no issues down the road gluing it in place. And I just made this little tiny door sign or um, you know, piece of wood here, just out of one solid piece of XPS foam. And I ran that little toothpick all the way through. That way, you know, if somebody's putting a mini down or you're moving this around and you accidentally hit it, it won't snap. It's really solid. Okay, now all the Hearst Arts I primed with this Vallejo surface primer that's black. And then I used um, a bunch of plaid paints in the video, the Brushed Metal series. Um, it's actually really nice. I used this black one and I was super impressed with how that made all the pipes look. And then I'm using just a bunch of different antique coppers and stuff like that for those pieces as well. I believe this was a, um, a cocoa bean or something like that. I just tried to use some new colors that I haven't used yet on the channel. All right, now I'm going into my makeshift uh, airbrush booth. I've got a new um, 5500 CFM hood that I'm working under right now. I have some cardboard and I just put them up on the sides and it allows me to uh, kind of contain everything and I pull those down when uh, I'm cutting on XPS foam or I'm doing other projects, so it's really nice. Now for the stonework, I used pretty much all Vallejo paints for the airbrushing portion. This is an ochre green for the shingles. I used a stone color for all the stone and the corner bricks I used a bone white. All right, now we're gonna start mixing a few colors. You know, you wanna make sure that you're ready to paint everything in one session when you're doing that because it's really hard to kind of mix and match and get these colors exactly right if you gotta come back to the project. I'm gonna use those two colors. It was a beastly brown and a leather color mixed together for the wood. And that's just a little trick, you know, just to kind of get your line back and make any corrections if you might have, you know, oversprayed. Now we're gonna be trying to add some variation in the color to all the stone. And I find that a really cool secret to getting a really nice stone color is layers. It's not so much all the, the, the colors that you use, it's going back over and over and layering them up and not being afraid to wash and rewash them. So I'm using a little bit of that ochre color from the shingles, a little bit of blue, it's just watered down and we're gonna let that dry. Then we're gonna take some um, Nolan oil and I'm gonna use that to wash pretty much the whole thing. I have my own black wash, but I wanted to try using Nolan oil. I went through probably half a pot of this, which actually it just sounds like I said hippopotamus. <laughs> anyway, um, I went through half a pot of this and um, you know, it's what, maybe like four bucks in wash. And I really liked the quality of it, it was nice. So who knows, maybe I'll do it again. And don't worry about being completely uniform with the wash. Have some areas heavier than others. And the same goes for when you, I hate to say dry brush, but maybe an over brush right here. I used to take all the paint off the brush. Don't be afraid to put some spots real heavy or leave a lot of paint on the brush. Um, it really adds a nice variation. Same again when you put that black wash down. So typically now you're gonna do a highlight, right? One light dry brush and color, good. Now that we got the wash down, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back now with some brown and it's watered down, again, some Vallejo paints and it's gonna add just that much more depth to all of the rock. Then we go back again with a nice light white color, uh, typically an off white. I don't like to use a solid white and give it one more final dry brush. You'll be amazed at how much more realistic your stone will look doing it that way. Now I'll put a link up above to my observatory video, which will go a little bit more in depth on my patina recipe and kind of painting something up like this. And I'll also have links in the description below to all the paints and tools that I've used in the video if you want to pick them up. 
Now this is the rust effect that I've liked to do, that I've been doing in a lot of my videos lately. And I make use of Typhus Corrosion and um, Rise of Rust to get that effect. All right, now we're just gonna glue this section in here with some Eileen's Tacky Glue. And now we're on to gluing all the pipes in place. And for this, I'm just using hot glue. All right, once we got those in, it's now time to finally glue this piece in. This was really top heavy and I kept knocking this all over my workshop for like a solid week. So I was real happy to finally get that glued in place. Okay, more detail. We're gonna go back on all the joints of every pipe and we're gonna do the same rust effect. I'll put a link up above to my cemetery fence video, which goes really in depth as to how I like to use my rust effects. And that was really cool. I had envisioned that this alchemist kind of blew a hole in the roof of a shop. So that's kind of what I was going for here. A little bit of pigment and some pigment fixer. Now we're gonna use some windows from shiftinglands.com. They also have a shop now here in the US, Shifting Lands uh, USA. So check them out. They got some really cool gear. And now again, we're going back to even more depth on the stonework with some moss. I just use a little bit of black green ink and I water it down first. And then I'm just uh, blowing some, uh, uh, some green turf a couple different colors on there. I felt like making a mess. So uh, that's what that was. And I'll put a link up above now to my green stuff video, which will show you how to make all of these uh, doorknobs and, and hinges and stuff like that. All right, now I wanted a really cool sign for the alchemist shop. And I had always envisioned a stained glass window. So that's what we're gonna do. This little uh, window that I made here, this uh, the sign, it will be, you know, obviously part of the plan. You can print that out, place it under a sheet of glass, roll out some green stuff real thin, and that's going to be your metalwork for the sign. Then taking some UV resin, we can place it into each separate compartment with some Vallejo ink, and just stir that up with a toothpick, and you'll have a really nice uh, sign once you're done. And you can see how easy that all comes up, the green stuff and the UV resin off the glass. All right, now a little bit of um, hobby chain or crafting chain. Just wrapped it around that wood post with a toothpick right through it to hold it in place. And I'll paint that up once I'm done. Now we're just gonna do a little bit of edge highlighting on all the blades of the fan. Go around the whole model, any place that you know you want to brighten up or add some more detail, now's the time. Okay, now we're going to add a scroll to the front of the building or a sign. If you want to download this sheet of scrolls, you can do that. I'll put a link up above to the video where I show you how to make these cool little signs. And this was like 11.30, 12 o'clock at night. I was all done with the build and I'm like, you know what, wait a minute. The whole top was kind of missing something small. I didn't know exactly what it was. It was pigeons. <laughs> so I painted up three pigeons. I used those paints right there to add that glossy, um, shiny iridescent look to the pigeons. And they turned out really, really nice, especially for like a 12 o'clock uh, paint job. Now we're putting in the smoke machine from Wayne's workshop. I'll put a link up above to that video um, that shows how this works. And for crafting, Poster Putty is gonna be your friend to put it around you know, where the smoke's coming out. It's going to keep the smoke going where you want because it likes to settle. If I didn't put it in there, it would've settled back kind of down into the building a little bit. 
and I'm using the um, power adapter here to connect it to the wall just to show it off but you can also pick up connectors and um, battery packs as well and you can see how fast the smoke starts pumping out of that it's really neat and that's it it's ready for the table All right, so now we have a really cool alchemy shop to add to our village. We also have the tavern, the blacksmith, the windmill observatory, we got a castle, and we can even throw in that mansion if we want to. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to see added to the village, and that will get you entered into a chance to win a free set of plans. All you have to do after that is follow me on Instagram, and I'll announce the winner there next Friday. While you're down in that comment section, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the next video here on the channel. And please consider heading on over to Patreon and supporting me there as well. I really appreciate that. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.